springs are the foundation of modern suspension and far misunderstood about the importance of it and I'm going to let you know why you care. A couple of misconceptions about motorcycle suspension. First of all, a lot of people believe that when you roll on the throttle that the front of the bike extends and that is correct. But they also believe that when you roll on the suspension the back end squats and that is wrong. In fact, the rear of the bike will raise up as you roll on the throttle. It's called anti-squat geometry. And springs are what makes that happen. Springs are also the key component to keep us isolated from all of the stuff that bumps and throws us around. Stiffer springs may give you a lighter ride. Adding preload does not make a spring stiffer. Here are the basics. Springs come in three different types of mechanical springs. You have a straight rake spring, like the one that's here, and that spring means that all of the coils are exactly the same distance with exactly the same material. It means that whatever energy is necessary to compress it one inch is the same amount of energy times two that compresses it two inches, which is the same amount of energy, which is three times of that energy is three inches. So if, let's just say 100 pounds will squat your spring one inch, 200 pounds is two inches, 300 pounds is three inches. So that's what a straight ring spring is. You also have what's called a dual rate spring. And this is the same spring, but it's coiled at two different rates. So you have these coils that are tight together, which give it less uh, resistance. And then you have the spring down here, which is pulled out and stretched out more, which requires more energy to compress it. The way this works is that you have a very soft ride on the softer portion of that dual rate spring. And then once it collapses that spring and it becomes solid, then it moves into the second portion. You can also have a dual rate spring where you have a lighter spring and a heavier spring with a collar in the middle. The third type of mechanical spring is a progressive wound spring. And that is just that each coil continually changes in distance and the amount of energy required to compress it. The reality is there's one more spring that we don't always take into consideration and that's the air spring. There's always an air gap and when you're talking about front suspension there's always an air gap and air is always progressively um, compressive which means that if you have a straight rate spring which is generally what you're going to find if you buy high-end suspension it is going to be a compressive rate. So as that straight rate spring compresses, the air is also compressing, allowing it to change the rate of compression. Now, the reason this matters to you is that when we talk about springs, factory springs are often a progressive wound spring. And it's the way the manufacturers work around the fact that they're gonna have riders buying their motorcycles that weigh anywhere from 100 pounds to 300 pounds. And they're looking for a spring that's gonna work for everybody, even though they may have an ideal weight. As an example, the KTM behind me, the 790, is ideal, according to uh, KTM, from 165 to 180 pound rider, which makes it perfect for me on the heavy end. But that 165 pound, 165 pound rider is going to have a much stiffer ride than I am, and just because 180 is a recommendation doesn't mean that a heavy rider can't ride it. But you want to make sure it's not going to blow through the stroke. And that progressive wound spring allows them to take care of that, that larger range of riders. What you often get when you get a high performance spring isn't just that you're going to get a spring rate that's made perfectly for you. You're also going to change the material. Cheaper springs are often much thicker material, much heavier material, because the steel isn't quite as good a quality. So if you go to a high-end or high-performance spring, they're going to be a thinner material, and often the coils are going to be farther apart, even though it's the same spring rate. What that's going to do is make that spring that's high-performance is often going to be pre-sagged, which means they work the spring so that they take the spring sag out, so in time, that spring doesn't develop an unnatural sag, but also it's a much lighter spring, which means you have less unsprung weight down in your suspension. And also it's not gonna take as much volume in your fork. So if you start changing fork oil, turns out that the spring is gonna make a difference. If that spring displaces more oil, it's gonna change the air gap. That's gonna change how much that works. Springs 
when we add preload to a spring, what preload to a spring does is it levels the suspension. As I mentioned, springs allow the bike to, uh, to deal with environments where there's constant change and it isolates the rider and the bike from that environment. So it moves up and down. Turns out springs are position sensitive, not necessarily speed sensitive. When we add in preload, what that does is that's a leveling. It, by, by adding preload, you're putting load into the spring to bring it back to a certain working range. That means if the bike is sagging on the back, so this is the front, this is the back, when it sags, if you add preload, you're basically putting a block in there that raises it back up. But that spring is still under that same heavy load. Because of that, it makes the spring feel much stiffer. And that's because when you look at the spring rates, if you have a heavier spring, which may give you a softer ride, it's because it's at zero preload. So the first time you add any load to it, the spring's going to get the natural movement. If I have a spring that's too light, I have to preload it. So let's just say I have 200 pounds on the bike and I have a, a regular spring that's made for a 200 pound rider and he sits on the bike, that spring's going to have a little bit of sag with zero preload. But if I have a lighter spring, that spring may sag very considerably. And so I may have to put 300 pounds of preload into that spring to get it to rise up so the bike has the correct attitude, so it's level again. But that means when the rider first sits on the bike, it may not have any movement. And for the next 100 pounds of, of energy, it also doesn't have movement. It has to hit that 301 pounds before it moves again, making it much stiffer. But that spring rate is still very shallow, where the heavier spring is much steeper. And that means that that, uh, that lighter spring is going to feel much stiffer, but on the other end, it's still going to be too soft. It's still going to bottom out. Spring rate is probably universally the cheapest, most effective improvement you can make on your suspension. In fact, it's probably one of the cheapest, most effective improvements you can make for performance of your motorcycle. This is worth the time and this is worth the money. Get the springs right and then you can mess around with damping settings, ride height, stroke, and all these other things that may give you an advantage off-road. So start with the spring, then we set sag, then we mess with our damping settings. When we get back, we get to talk about damping and oil and orifices and all those other things that affect our suspension. But before we get there, we have to set the spring and get that right. Oh, one resource you might find, if you do go online, Race Tech. Uh, make springs and they do have a really nice program where you can go online, put your bike in, it'll tell you what your stock spring rate is and it'll also give you some recommendation what they recommend. Personal opinion, most of the time their spring rates are just one too heavy. So I would always order one lighter. The reason is I believe in finesse, I ride light and I don't like to pound my bike into things. The smoother you are as a rider, the more compliant you can make your suspension. Remember, the primary job of suspension is about keeping that tire in contact with the ground. And if it's too stiff and you're bouncing around, it's not going to be in contact. So that's not going to do you any good. I love suspension. I love springs. I can't wait to do the next one.